Open your workbook to lesson 117 and find part one. <clears throat> You're going to complete these statements. You have to rewrite both fractions so they have the lowest common denominator. Problem A reads six ninths and four sixths. The, common the, least common the lowest common denominator for ninths and sixths is eighteenths. Rewrite both fractions, then complete the original statement. Pause the video now to work the problem. Here's what you should have. Problem B, the fractions read 3 fourths and 8 tenths. The lowest common denominator for fourths and tenths is 20. Rewrite both fractions, pause the video now and solve the problem. Here's what you should have. 8 tenths is greater. Problem C, the fractions read 9 fifths and 5 thirds. The lowest common denominator of fifths and thirds is 15 ths. Rewrite the fractions now and figure out which is greater. Here's what you should have. Now please find part two in your workbook. You're going to make a rectangle inside the unit square and complete the equation for 3 fifths times 2 fifths. The fractions show that how to make the unit square. Both fractions are fifths. So there will be five on each side of the square. Then you'll shade the rectangle that shows 3 fifths times 2 fifths. This is what you should have. Here's that three-fifths and two-fifths. There's your square. Shade the rectangle and complete the equation by showing the fraction for the shaded part. The fraction for the shaded part is six twenty-fifths. Three times two is six, five times five is twenty-five. So the area of the shaded rectangle is six twenty-fifths of the square unit. That's the same answer you get when you multiply three-fifths times two-fifths. Here's three tenths on one side of the, e of the equal and hundredths on the other side. Three tenths on this side of the equal, one hundredths on this side. What do we multiply three tenths by to change it into hundredths? Ten over ten, ten tenths. Three times thirty, sorry, three times ten equals thirty. So how many hundredths equals three tenths? 30 one hundredths, like so. Here's three out of 10, and here's 30 out of 100. The shaded areas are the same size. We can show the same equation with decimal values. 3 tenths, 30 hundredths. Writing a zero after the three does not change the value. It's simply multiplying the value by 10 tenths. We have 10 times more parts and 10 times more parts shaded. Remember, if you write a zero after a decimal value, you don't change the value because you're multiplying by 10 tenths. Here's a problem that adds tenths and hundredths. Four tenths plus five one hundredths. The denominators are not the same, so we change tenths into hundredths. We're gonna multiply four tenths by 10 tenths. Four times 10 equals 40, plus five one hundredths. Altogether, we have 45 one hundredths. We can do the same thing with decimal numbers. Four tenths, this is the same as this, and five one hundredths, this is the same. This is the fraction version, this is the decimal version. 
We can change four tenths into hundredths by adding a zero here, turning it into 41 hundredths, just like we did here, like so. So the new problem is 40 hundredths plus five hundredths. The answer is still 45 hundredths. This is what it looks like as a fraction. This is a decimal. Here's a diagram of the original problem. The first box shows four tenths, right here. The second box shows five one hundredths. We can't add these decimals because one is tenth and the other is hundredths. So we change the first box to hundredths, like so. Now we have 40 hundredths plus five hundredths. Now we can add them together. All together, you have 45 hundredths. This fraction reads 18 thirds. The division problem for this fraction is 18 divided by three. This number, the denominator, tells how many groups there are. So we'll make three rows. One, two, three, or three groups. 18 divided by three equals six, meaning we gotta put six in each group. We'll use the example of chairs. There are three equal groups with six chairs in each group. Now please find part three in your workbook. Oops. Problem A, 12, six. The division problem, 12 divided by six. There are six equal groups. 12 divided by six equals two. So you're gonna place two in each of those six groups. Just like so, two in each group of six. Problem B, 15 thirds, also known as 15 divided by three. There are three equal groups. There are 15 in all. So you're going to have five in each group. Like so, five C's here, here, and here. All together you have 15 split into three groups. Now find part four in your workbook. You're going to make a line plot and answer questions. Each point on the line plot will show fractions. The first fraction shown is three-fourths. The next fraction is going to be four-fourths, and then so on, like so. The fractions tell the pounds of flour in different jars. jars. The unit name is pounds. Write pounds right here. Act A, three jars, jars have five fourths pounds of flour. Make three X's for five on top of five fourths. Right here. Fact B, one jar has two pounds of flour. This is a tricky one. If this equals one pound, one over one, this is double the amount on top, so this equals two. So two jars have 10 fourths pound, sorry. One jar has two pounds of flour. So we're gonna put one X here. Fact C, two jars have 10 fourths pounds of flour. So we're gonna put two above this. Fact D, three jars have seven fourths pounds of flour. So three is gonna go right here. Fact E, one jar has six fourths pounds of flour. So one X will go here. This is what it should look like. Now, add up each of these. Five plus five plus five, six is by itself. Seven plus seven plus seven, eight. 10 plus 10, like so. 15 fourths, 6 fourths, 21 fourths, 8 fourths, 20 fourths. Now add the numerators together and remember the denominator stays the same. Pause the video now to work it. You should have 70 fourths. Now you're going to figure out how much would be in each jar 
if all jars had the same amount of flour? You're going to do 70 fourths divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, divided by 7. And 70 fourths divided by 10 is 7 fourths. So if we took all the flour and put it in the jars so that all the jars have the same amount, all the jars would have 7 fourths pounds of flour. Right here, our average. Now open your textbook to lesson 117 and find part one. The first problem has three questions, A, B, and C. Work the problem. Answer all three questions. And remember the unit names. The equation you should start with is M equals 5 thirds F. Pause the video now to work the problem. Resume when you're ready to check. All right. A, what's the length of the maple board? The maple board is 120 inches. What's B, what's the total length of both boards? The total length of both boards is 192 inches. C, how much longer is the maple board than the fir board? The maple board is 48 inches longer than the fir board. Work the next problems. Answer questions D, E, and F, and don't forget the unit names. The equation you should start with is B equals 5 halves M. Pause the video now to work the problem. D, how many magazines were there? There were 38 magazines. E, how many fewer magazines than books were there? 57 fewer magazines. F, what is, was the total number of books of, and, and magazines? There were 133 books and magazines. Moving or switching gears to expressions. Here are expressions that multiply by C. We don't know the number for C, but C is some number. Here, we have six times C. Repeat after me, six times C. Next, two times C. Two times C. One half times C. One half times C. 10 times C. 10 times C. Which is more, six times C or two times C? Six times C would be more because six is greater than two. Which is more, two times C or one half times C? Two times C is more. Which has the largest value? Out of all of these, which has the largest value? 10 times C. And which expression has the smallest value? One half times C has the smallest value. How many times greater six times C is than two times C? This equation is three times greater than this equation. How many times greater is 10 times C then two times C, five times greater. Now find part two in your work, in your textbook. The value inside the parentheses is the same for all these expressions. I'll read each item. You'll write the answer. Item A, write the letter of the expression that has the greatest value. The letter that has the greatest value is P. Item B, write the letter of the expression that has the smallest value. The expression that has the smallest value is R. Item C, write the letter of expressions that are more than one half times the quantity 1,856 minus 428. The answer, 
P, Q, and T. The expressions that are more than one half times the quantity 1,856 minus 428 is P, Q, and T. Item D, write the letter of the expression that is three times greater than four times the quantity 1,856 minus 428. The expression that is three times greater than four times the quantity 1,856 minus 248 is P. The quantity 1,856 minus 428 is 1,428. Item E, figure out what three times the quantity 1,856 minus 428 equals. The answer is 4,284. Item F, Figure out what one half times the quantity 1,856 minus 428 equals. The answer, 714. Your independent work begins now. Independent work. For lesson 117 is textbook three through seven. Again, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Otherwise, get busy.